Hello, beautiful hearts. I'm here today to remind you to not worry, to not have any worries. And if worries arise, it's okay, but be the observer. We really don't have much to do here, but be. And being isn't an action step. Like, how do I be? And then the mind takes that and it's like, oh my God, am I being? Is this it? Is this it? I think I'm doing it. It doesn't feel right. You know what I mean? It's like we're trying to make being into an action step. And it's not. Beingness, presence takes care of everything. And that's very um, counterintuitive to how we were raised and conditioned in an unconscious third dimensional reality, which is you do more, you get more. You do better, you are better. And, I, and you have to trust me on this. You have to trust and listen with the ears in your heart to feel the frequency that I'm transmitting to you, the presence that I speak from, that all you need is this presence. It, it moves through you as you. This is where non-duality comes in and says there's no doer. We awaken to the realization that it was always God consciousness flowing through us in alignment with the will of one, oneness. And so you're it. All the sages, all the masters, all the greats have said this throughout time, but we can't harbor that on a 5% conceptual mind. We must recognize the formless awareness we are. You see, because who we are can't be photographed. It's not tangible. It's an intuitive recognition. We can only be the perceiver. We can only be the self. We can only be awareness can't know itself, you see, because it's the knower of all. It's just a silent recognition. It's nothing fancy. You see, the, the ego wants enlightenment, ascension, awakening to be some flashy show. <laughs> it's very ordinary in a sense because you're just coming back home to you. And so it's not unfamiliar. It's very familiar. It feels like cuddling into a, 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 like a warm, cozy blanket filled with love. It just feels familiar. It feels like home, right? Om, sweet om. And so many of us have seen this true self, right? We've rested in that beingness and there is no worries in that beingness, but the mind will come in after we've had a glimpse or a clear scene of the true self and it will doubt. It will say, that can't be it. How can that be it? No angels came down and crowned me. No Ave Maria is playing in the background. How can this be it? Again, it's a silent recognition. It's something that's always been here. It's very familiar. It's the field of awareness. It's what gives rise to your thoughts. It's what gives rise to your imagination and your emotions. But it's not that. See, because you can't envision the true self because it's all of mind. Who we are is beyond mind. It created mind. It uses mind as a tool. And so through this awakening, we are negating what we thought we were, who we, told we, who we were told we were. Right, And so that is why presence, just being, is so powerful. Because there's clear seeing in presence. There's clear knowing in presence. You know all is well. And you don't take action out of obligation, but you take it out of inspiration. Out of selfless love. Not for personal gain. <laughs> it's because it's your natural state as love. To give and to create from that love. It's effortless. Before I come and, and speak with you, I don't contemplate and, and, and write these words down. I speak from that emptiness. I speak from that presence. There's no thought here. As I speak the words, I hear the words. And this can be very scary for the ego to trust this presence, this beingness, this emptiness. Okay, and when I say emptiness, it's not empty, it's very full. <laughs> it's very full. Every potential is contained within the emptiness, you see. But you don't have to grab onto those potentials, aka thoughts and emotions. You are so empty and vast and spacious that you can clearly see these little potentials. You see the thought forms, you see your, your old commentary and dialogue, and you don't engage. You don't have to engage. You don't have to try to heal your thoughts or heal your emotions. As soon as you know who you are, that's enough. 
Let it pass by you. Let it flow through you. Don't cling. Don't grab. Don't grasp. Just let it all flow. Let it come. Let it go. Don't stick. Don't cling. Don't... <gasps> Let it magnetize to you and stick into your beingness. Okay, because what happens is we see these thought forms, we see these dense emotions, and they're very intimate because they've been with us our whole life, yeah? And it's very intimate. It feels very personal. And so we cling. We follow the thought. We follow the emotion. And as soon as we infuse or impregnate that thought with the power of belief, it becomes the experience, you see? But you were there as awareness watching before you clinged, before you believed, b before you said, this is true for me. It just feels familiar. Okay, but we're going to get used to emptiness. We're going to get used to presence. To staying in this spontaneous state of being where life is you and you are life. There's no, here's me, and then I'm waiting for some kind of like, big sign for what to do next. It's just you know when to move. It feels like love. It feels like inspiration. It feels like I got to share this and not in a forceful, egoic, dominant way, but just I want to share because it feels good. It's amazing. It's my cup's overflowing and I want to give. I want to give and I want to give and there is no cords attached. Okay. I want, I want you to know this. A soul does not give to receive. It's always receiving, and that's why it can give so effortlessly without a handout, you see? Because who you're giving to is yourself. So don't worry. Just be. Observe the worry. Observe the worrier. You know, I used to be a worry wart, I tell you. <laughs> okay? And so, and I can still see that old dialogue or emotional imprints that will come into um, my body vehicle. And I watch it. I observe it. Okay? We have to be very good discerners of what is our mind and what is God consciousness. What is, uh, what is awareness? What is our souls? You see? Spirit or our soul, who we truly are, self with a capital S, is not in stress hormones. It's not worrying. It's not freaking out. It's not trying to figure out what it needs to create next. It's life itself. It's effortless, effortless beingness. It, it doesn't need to do that. So it doesn't feel like it has to stress or strive. It's, it's a very complete and whole state. You don't want anything in that state of consciousness. You're unified. You still get inspiration. You still get these, oh, let's go do that, like right now. Huh? Filming this for you, for us, for all. So it's not that we don't take action. It's not that we don't create. It's not that we don't do things, you know. But you're, you're not doing things from the person, from the ego. You're creating from source itself, from love itself, from the heart of creation. So the real question is, can we just withstand our own emptiness? Can we withstand that silence, that stillness? That again is not empty in the sense how the mind wants to perceive that. It's a very fulfilled state. Very fulfilled. Okay, but what we tend to do in meditation, or if we're just practicing self-awareness, observing the observer, noticing the noticer, the mind can come in and go, okay, do something, do an affirmation. Visualize something. What's next? This isn't very exciting. You must observe that one too. Hello, little one. You agree, yeah? Absolutely. So we must observe those thoughts that say this sucks. I don't like this. What's supposed to happen? There's no visualizations. What's going on here? You observe those thought forms too. You observe that emotional body too. And then eventually it just gets more and more quiet. 
and your ego just becomes a small, tiny little voice that peeks in every now and then, and you observe that. It doesn't have control over you. It's now your servant, right? Because the ego gets integrated, it doesn't actually die, it just gets integrated. Okay? And then spirit, our souls, use the ego, use this body vehicle in alignment with the will of the divine, the highest will, the highest will for all concerned. There's no me, there's we. And then the we is one. <laughs> But don't think this, don't, don't get it, give any of this to your mind. Really feel this with your heart and listen with your heart. Okay, because when we are our souls, when we are resting as ourself, there's not a lot of mind chatter. There's not a lot of busyness. There's not a lot of noise. And that's not the heart. The heart is not loud like that. It's very peaceful, beautiful, joyful, calm, connected. So practice being, which is also receiving, you know, because we're taught so much create, 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 create. Receive, receive, receive. It's all created. It's already done. We just have to be relaxed enough to receive that, to receive that light, to receive heaven, to receive the kingdom, queendom now, okay? Because uh, the divine's not an inch from you. It is you. And so um, it's my joy to point to you the perfection that's within this now, not tomorrow, not next week, not in two more years or after another retreat, but right now. Find the perfection within this now with me. But not with your mind, yeah? Not with your mind, with your heart. You feel it out. You feel it out. And it's not out here. Stop looking at the world. Stop looking at mind. Same thing. Come home. Bring your consciousness inward. Turn it inward. Observe your consciousness and its fluctuations and its ups and downs. You must be a master at this, of observing your consciousness and its tendencies. Hmm? As soon as we go to sleep, those programs take over. Mind comes back in, you see? So we must be vigilant watchers. That's the discipline. That's the work, if you will, is, is staying on our throne, staying present, staying conscious. And not taking impulsive action, but following the sweet, selfless impulse of the heart, of inspiration, of love, of joy, of compassion and gratitude. Following that. Not taking action out of anger and aggression and separation. Watch that. Who does that? Right? And observe the one who has commentary of all of this or, or, or doesn't like what I'm sharing. Observe that part too. Right? Because who we truly are, pure awareness is not for or against anything. <laughs> it, it, it's, it has no like community. It's not for this or against that. It just is. It just is. And we can't define it. <laughs> We can just be it, you see. It's so simple. It's so simple. We overlook it every day because the ego wants a fancy show. And the ego loves chasing highs, you know, the, the polarity swings. I was talking to someone yesterday in session. We were talking about for a while there, you know, we're like Tarzan and we swing from high to low to high to low to high to low. And then we realize, hey, let's get into the eye of the hurricane. Let's get into divine neutrality, which is pure consciousness, which is presence. OK, the ego likes the highs and the lows because it creates stories. Poor, poor me. And now I'm high. I've done it. Now I'm not. And then you realize, oh, my God, because pain and joy, same coin, different sides. Pain is the escort to joy. Joy is the escort to pain in the sense of these polarities. But when you reach divine neutrality, which is a neutral charge, which isn't going to swing you from high to low polarities, you're neutral. And that neutrality doesn't mean you're like, 
I'm a zombie and I don't have any emotion and I don't feel anything. I'm just bland vanilla. It's not like that, guys. Okay? It's just uh, you, you don't have those m those highs and lows intensity. There's still joy. There's bliss. There's love. There's, there's peace. There's compassion. It's just not these insane swingings. Okay? Because when you're neutral, you know, you're not going to have that strong magnetism in different directions. So that's why presence is so powerful. It balances everything. Everything. Because it's neutral. It's in, in neutral awareness. Who we are is neutral. It doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't have a belief system. And who we are doesn't need to be believed in. That way, God doesn't need you to believe in it for it to exist. That'd be arrogance, right? So, it's beyond belief. And it's within you now. But you must know where to look. And it's not out here. And it's not being lost in the mind and imagination and, and con you know, doing memory and just siphoning through images. It's, it's resting in pure awareness self-awareness, observation. We're taught to be so busy. Even through quarantine, right? <laughs> busy, busy, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? <sighs> Nothing. Nothing. Oh, but that goes against culture. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Mm. You know, the more you awaken, the less, it's not as crowded. The higher you ascend, it's not as crowded. You think you might be going the wrong direction? You're not. Stay with the silent knowing. Stay with your intuitive knowing. <laughs> that you're here. You've always been here. It was only imagined belief that you were not here. It was only something you were dreaming and the collective was dreaming that you were never here, but you were always here. And I invite you into the perfection of this present moment that has never left you. But you identified with mind and mind left in the sense of distraction and Velcroing to thought forms and emotions. Let the dust settle, aka thought forms and emotions. Let it settle. I know when you sit down to meditation for a silent contemplation like this, or self-inquiry, your body may be raging at first and your thought forms may be pissed off at first. <laughs> Observe that because it's not you, okay? Um, that's just a conditioning, not wanting you to get into the present moment because when you are in the present moment, ego, poof, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh my God. It unravels. It can't exist in the now. It can't exist in the present moment, you see? And it knows that. And that's why the mind comes in with attacks and distractions and, and all of these things. So you don't stay in your heart. So you don't stay in unborn awareness. And then we may stay in the space for a little bit, yeah? Ooh, I like this. And then the ego gets bored. The body gets bored. The mind gets bored. And it goes out, plays and plays and plays and plays, and they're suffering again. And then it realizes, we, we, you just end up realizing, abide. Right? It's very simple. The mind wants to complicate all of this. All of it. You're already perfect. You're already whole. Find that space within you now. And you're not going to find it on the level of mind. Connect with your breath, observe the observer, watch the watcher, and notice the one noticing everything. Notice that silent watcher that has no opinion. <laughs> uh, so selfless. Don't touch imagination, don't touch those thought forms coming in, don't touch the dense emotions coming in, just be as you are. Don't worry, just be. And if worry arises, observe the warrior. Whom is that? To whom does this worry belong? 
To whom do these thoughts belong to? To whom does this stress belong to? Question your mind. Observe it. Hmm. Hmm. Peace be with you. Peace be with us all. And may the light of the kingdom queendom shine through all human hearts now. Namaste.